Okay, so you can do those on your own. What I want to do is take this idea of molar mass and now apply it to how we can utilize it with grams and moles. Okay, so to do that, we want to have a relationship between moles and mass. Okay, so if we know the molar mass of something, we can actually convert from moles to grams pretty easily or from grams to moles. So these are two practice problems doing a very simple conversion. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. So how many grams are in 3.45 times 10 to the negative 3 moles? Of potassium nitrate. Okay, so our first step in this process is to set up a simple conversion. So we have 3.45 times 10 negative 3 moles, and we want grams, and we're dealing with potassium nitrate. Now, potassium nitrate is K. NO3. So to do this, we have one potassium, we have one nitrate, and we have three oxygens. Okay? So, so potassium, if we look it up, it has an atomic mass of 39.10 grams per mole. Nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. And oxygen, again, is 16.00 grams per mole. Okay? And if we take this and we have our 39 plus 1401 plus 16 times 3. And if we add those all up, we get a molar mass of 101.11 grams per mole. So adding these all up, factoring the 3 here is 101.11 grams per mole. Which means if I have 3.45 times 10 to the negative 3 moles, for every one mole I have 101.11 grams of my potassium nitrate. So moles can cancel, and I would take the 3.45 times 10 to the negative 3 times that, and that would tell us our grams. Okay? If we do this math, we end up getting 0.349 grams rounded to three layers of precision because this has three layers of precision in it. Okay? So if we go back to the screen and we check it, and sure enough, we end up with 0.349 grams of potassium nitrate, okay? We can do the exact same thing for our next problem, but in this case, we wanna know how many moles are in 2.23 grams of magnesium chlorate, okay? So in this case, we know the grams of magnesium chlorate And we're solving for moles. So in this case, we our grams will be on the bottom and our moles will be on the top. So when you solve for the, the molar mass of magnesium chlorate, okay, we're gonna put the grams on the bottom and the moles on the top. So we're gonna flip it. Okay? So I'm not gonna go through all the math again for molar mass, I'm just gonna tell you that one. So magnesium chlorate is 191.21 grams per mole. Okay, so it's 191.21 grams per mole if you solve for that. Okay. You know you have 2.23 grams, now you divide by 191.21, and if you do that, you get an answer of 0 0.0117 gram, moles sorry, of magnesium chlorine. Okay? Go back to our screen, and we see it worked out there also for you. Okay? So this is a very simple one-step process, but when you're working with moles and mass, this one step is probably the most common step that you're going to do in all of our problems coming up in this unit, okay? Is being able to go from moles to grams or grams back to moles, okay? So the next step is, is once we have that ability to go in and out of mass and moles, is we need to somehow apply that to a balanced chemical equation, okay? So to do that, we need to be able to look at a balanced chemical, balanced chemical equation for the first time in kind of viewpoint from moles, okay? So if we take a look at something simple like this, we have uh, propane here, C C3H8, reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water, so kind of a typical combustion reaction. And if we look, we have a 1 to 5 to 3 to 4 ratio. Now up until this point, we just kind of assumed that those were atoms or molecules or kind of an amount. And they are. They are just an amount to them. So for every 5 O2s, we need 3 CO2s. For every 4 waters, we need 1 uh, propane and so forth. 
What we haven't talked about up until now is the fact that we can actually use this as a mole ratio. Okay, so um, you can apply the concept of amounts by using moles here. And here's where the power of the mole really starts to come out for us. Because instead of having to count Avogadro's numbers worth, or, worth of oxygen to get to a mass, we can just say, well, if there's a five here, that means there's five moles of oxygen needed for every three moles of carbon dioxide produced and for every four moles of water produced. Okay, um, so really this concept here is the ability for us to take one substance and then relate it or convert it through dimensional analysis to another substance. So if we know how much of this we start with, we can know how much of this we need, how much of this we'll make, how much of this we're going to make. Okay, So let's take, take this idea and go down and do some practice stuff with it. Okay, So if I have four moles of propane, how many moles of carbon dioxide can I make? Okay, So if I have four moles of this, how many moles of carbon dioxide do I make from that? Okay. Now, you might be able to answer that off the top of your head. Say, well, it's a 1 to 3 ratio. If this becomes a 4, it's 3 times that. It's 12. Okay. So we get 12. Awesome. Now, we want to look at that through the concept of dimensional analysis to give an idea of what we're talking about here. If we have 4 moles of propane, the equality there is that we know that we have 1 mole of propane for every three moles of our carbon dioxide, okay? So this step right here comes from the balanced equation, okay? And again, so we have to get four moles of propane cancels, and we convert to moles of carbon dioxide instead, and obviously four times three is 12 moles of CO2. Okay. Now you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of work for just taking something times three. I can do that. That's fine. Which is good. I, I agree with you. You probably can. Um, what gets tricky is what happens when things don't line up as easy with the math. Okay. So the next one is not, isn't hard yet, but isn't quite as easy. If you want to make 18 moles of water, how many moles of oxygen will be used? Okay. So we want to make 18 moles of water. And we want to figure out how many moles of oxygen is going to be used. So we know that moles of water we want to cancel. And we want to figure out moles of oxygen. Okay. So we go back to our balanced chemical equation. So for water, it's a 4. And for oxygen, it's a 5. So what is 18 times 5 divided by 4? Okay. So if you can't do that in your head, you take... You know, 18 times 5 divided by 4. Punch into my calculator down here. Okay. And if we do that, we get 22.5. Okay. So, again, you might be able to do that in your head. If you can, that's great. But this is just, again, one step in a bigger process that we're building towards. Okay. So, 18 times 5 divided by 4, and we end up getting 22.5 moles of oxygen is what we need for that, okay? So um, we're able to take one substance, because of equality within a balanced chemical equation, convert to another substance. So the key for this reaction is we're converting from water to oxygen. And that's why, you notice in my labels, I'm actually putting the compound inside the dimensional analysis. Because moles is the same here, it's moles and moles. What's different is the substance in this step, okay? All right, guys, it's a little short video lesson, but that's what we want to talk about here. In our next lesson, we will actually go down the lines and we will uh, start going into this idea of stoichiometry. So putting together things that we've already talked about into multi-step problems coming up next. All right, thank you.